The year is 1972, and Polaroid invents the SX-70 and goes on to sell 700,000 units by 1974. Let's have these vintage magazine adverts explain what it was all about. The SX-70, quite simply, can reveal the world to you as you've never seen it before. Slim, graceful, balancing lightly in your hand at only 24 ounces, this remarkable package of more than 200 transistors, elegantly wrapped in top grain leather, scarcely hints at the wonders it can perform. Slide a pack of film into this magnificent instrument. Move in close, closer than you can get with practically any other camera. Look through the viewer and you're actually looking through the lens at a big, bright, clear image. You see your picture come to life in minutes, growing more vivid, more detailed as you watch. Choose the SX-70 on the far left and you've bought yourself the world's most extraordinary camera in its most elegant form, with a brush chrome finish and a luxurious wrap of genuine leather. So obviously, uh, these are very old school ads. Uh, I definitely like the perspective that they bring towards this. Um, I don't think I've seen any other videos kind of go over the old school advertisements this thing had. I kind of just imagine, you know, Mad Men, a group of guys in a smoky old room trying to figure out what's the best way to market this thing to people so they buy it. Because it was considered pretty sp expensive back in the day. These ads kind of capture that allure that they were trying to give people about this kind of instant film photography that was absolutely new for the time. Hats off to them for definitely making it uh, funny and interesting and I'm sure captured a lot of people's attention. A lot of influential people out there that eventually picked one of these up and started using it uh, for their art and for just their daily life. So we're going to jump into when I first opened up my Polaroid SX-70 for the first time and kind of going through the process of finding out how uh, I found out it was broken uh, and that it didn't work. And I found a place to repair it, which is Brooklyn Film Camera. I got it back and I kind of show you how the rest of it all works. All right, let's jump into my first time opening the camera. I got lucky that this came with the original leather case. It definitely has that 70s leather smell to it, like an antique store. Uh, anyone that has bought a vintage camera with leather straps or an old leather camera bag will know exactly what I'm talking about. Since it was in the case, it looks like it was in mint condition. Not that many scratches on it, and the leather wasn't peeling, which is typical. I had to watch a couple videos on how to open this just because it doesn't exactly feel natural uh, to pop it open like that. I started to clean it with just mild soap and water, and for the sticky stuff, I used isopropyl alcohol with the Q-tip. Uh, while cleaning it, I found that the sticker right underneath the eyepiece unfortunately deteriorated. So wiping it became just like this sticky black mess. All right, so I tried loading a new cartridge into it and it wouldn't spit out the dark slide. So the motor must be stuck or something like that. Um, I went to my local film processing lab and asked the guys there just because they work with film cameras all day if they know anyone local that could fix it. Unfortunately, it looks like it's such a specialized repair job that I'm probably going to have to send it out. Um, I did a little bit of research on uh, sites like Reddit just to see you know what services people have used in the past and I landed on Brooklyn Film Camera. I'm kind of hesitant to send out uh, something, something like this, uh, just because you know things get lost in the mail or they throw packages around. So I'm kind of worried about it, but I guess that's what I'm gonna have to do to send it out. So, Brooklyn Film Camera had a pretty easy checkout process. I just selected my model and then typed out a short message explaining the issue that I was experiencing. At the time, they said it would uh, take maybe about two to three weeks for the repair and also shipping it back, which in my opinion is pretty fast. They also had other options like upgrading the leather and modifying it to accept 600 series cartridges. I'm trying to keep my costs low, so I just opted in for the repair. All right, just got my Polaroid back from the East Coast. Now it's time to see how it looks. 
They package it up real nice. Um, I also had to opt in for the leather upgrade since in order to repair the camera, they had to remove the bottom leather patch. And honestly, you probably have to do that for every repair. So if you're gonna send one of these in to them, I would expect to shell out that extra cash. I only have one bad thing to say, and to be honest, it's not that bad. There's a little bubble on the replacement sticker under the viewfinder. In fact, I didn't even know that replacing that sticky goo under there was an option other than completely wiping it off. Nonetheless, I think it's a really nice touch. So here's a handy list they sent out with it. Basically it lists all the things that they did to repair the camera. I should have asked what was actually wrong with it, but through my research I think the motor was just stuck in place. It's really nice that they have this little checklist and I think it gives me more confidence in the work that they've done. From realigning the camera's viewfinder and rollers, adjusting the opening and closing movements, and cleaning all the electrical contacts inside the camera. It looks like they also have a second tech take a look at it before they send it out, which again speaks to their attention to detail when repairing these cameras. Now it's for the moment of truth and load a new cartridge into it, see how it goes. Now that is a satisfying sound. So I wanted to show you guys just a comparison with another instant camera that came out in 1976, the Kodak EK6. You can see that this is getting closer to that 80s aesthetic, uh, plastic parts, odd leather placement, and look how huge this thing is compared to the SX70. You can clearly see why the Polaroid still is the winner in this category. Obviously, my first photo with this camera will be of my cat, Pirate. The photo is a little shaky because I moved too soon after I pressed the shutter button. You also lose your vision in the viewfinder, which caught me off guard. All right, so after getting it up and running, I can kind of give it a small review, and there's just nothing like it. I mean, it just feels so solid in your hand. The mechanical operation of the whole thing just feels awesome. The viewfinder, in fact, is huge and it is bright. You can focus the lens like this and it just looks fantastic through this thing. It kind of gives me like medium format vibes whenever you look through the viewfinder. And, um, I've had the Fujifilm Instax Mini. I've had this for maybe about 10 years at this point. And this camera's great because you don't have to really worry about it. You can give it to someone at a party. You can take it to like fun events and stuff like that. It's really great. You can take a photo and it makes people excited. And if they like the photo enough, you know, I just say, hey, keep it, go ahead. And I can definitely see doing the same with the Polaroid camera here, but obviously with it being a little bit more of a relic, I wouldn't trust the average person to hold this thing. Um, and especially because you have to use the focus ring where most people, um, I think they would have just a little bit of trouble getting to understand how to use it. But to see how people react to it, I'm actually gonna take it to my buddy's house and see how he likes it, uh, just to take a couple of test shots and see how it goes. So let's go ahead and go to his house. Oh, one quick thing before I forget, um, the Fujifilm has flash. And so that works really well, right? For parties and events, just because you don't always get perfect lighting conditions that the SX-70 needs. You do kind of need to shoot, shoot it in kind of perfect conditions, sunny outside in that sense. But um, you can, in fact, get a little flash bar attachment for it. So I probably will get that as an accessory in the future, just because Polaroid photos, when they have that nice kind of bright image, especially if it's a dark scene, I think it looks really cool. Kind of gives it that aesthetic that some people are looking for. 
And so I'll probably get that in the future. But I just wanted to add that in before I left. All right, let's go. Like oh how it my feels. God. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's cool, man. Is the case from the right. 70s? Too? Yeah, the original case. I got pretty lucky with this one. You trying to figure it out? Yeah, I don't. Wanna, I don't want to break it. But you can. You don't have to be uh, too gentle with it. I know. It feels. That's what I mean. Like it feels, it feels like you're gonna break it. So I'll, do you want me to give you a hint? Yeah. All right. So like uh, on that part right there, that's what has the grip. Mm -hmm. Kind of lift up on that back part there first. And don't worry, it'll feel like, like yeah. There you go. Oh. Okay. So now that it's open. I think you can try lift up this back part, and it should try to it should kind of like lift up. And you'll feel like a pop when you do that too. It's a very yes. Oh. Okay, so now <laughs> it's still loose. It's not locked. Look on the other side. Do you see that arrow? Uh, there's like a little metal. This uh, one. Other side. Other side. Oh yeah. So go ahead and push that opposite direction of the arrow because that arrow's telling you how to collapse it actually, and that can kind of like lock into place. Yeah. Cool. And that's it. You're set. Yeah, I sent it in to get repaired. That costs about 200 bucks because they also replaced the leather on it. Because to repair it, they had to take off the leather. Yeah, the leather's nice. Uh, so it has new leather on it, has new mechanics on the inside. So it should be, should be good for yeah, the next insane. maybe 50 years. Who knows? Like, well, technically, it was designed for that. Yeah, yeah just cargo pants, have, like, dude. Cargo pants. Yeah, yeah. Vietnam vets. <laughs> All right. Pants. You want to you see if we can take it outside? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let's do it. Let me see here. So the exposure button, it's not too bad. I'll put it in the middle right now because I don't know how it's going to react. That's it. Yeah, spit it out in the front. Cool. Like crazy. So now it takes maybe about, I think it takes about, oh, you don't have to shake it. What? Yeah, you don't have to shake it. Yeah. That's oh, sweet. Uh, but now it takes about 20 minutes for it to fully 20? Develop. Yeah, like Damn, fully but I, develop. That's sick, I mean, still. We'll see. We'll see what Herbie thinks about it. Well, we got one more picture on this? No, no, no. We got, um, uh, I think we have five now. Damn. We have five left. Yeah. So wait, don't take it out yet. What's crazy to me? Cool. I was like, I was trying to figure out where does it come out of? Look yeah. at that little slip that they Dude, come out of. Dude, this thing's sick. Right? Isn't that crazy? Damn, this is a really cool camera. Right. <laughs> it kind of fits your aesthetic right now. Yeah. Three, two, one. Uh, I'm like afraid to like break it. It's like full metal construction. No, it doesn't go out that way. No, no, that doesn't bend. That doesn't bend. No, no. So I'm gonna give you a little hint. A little oh, wait. Hint. So hold on. Hold it like this. So, and then lift up this. That's why it has the grip on it. Oh. So lift it up there. That's it. Oh my and god. Look. There you go. Now look at the front. Look, look where it comes out of. That's so sick. That Dude, look separate. at this little secret Fire. compartment that comes that out of it. nuts? What? I know, right? What the fuck? <laughs> That's so cool. This is so crazy. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, there we go. That was cool. There we go. Hang and loose. <laughs> Hang and loose. Three, two, one. Nice. Hiking in the hey. <laughs> <laughs> It's like hiking. Like hiking. Like hiking. Like Am I in the shot? Like here? Oh, you're in. Uh, my ass like this? Oh, yeah. Yeah? That's yeah. in the shock? That's heavy in the shock. Yeah? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna grab it out of my pocket. Uh-huh. I'm gonna turn around and take a photo of you. Okay, okay. All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. Yeah, you are. All right, peek out from the back of the camera. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Nice. I really like the action on this thing. That it feels really good. Sick, so, there we go. Oh, man, I'm dizzy. Oh. 
Ooh. Ooh. Thank you guys for making it to the end of the video and for watching all the way through, which is the same thing. So I'll repeat that again. All right, guys, we've made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this, definitely drop a subscribe below and like the video. And definitely leave a comment if you have any questions about the SX70 camera or working with Brooklyn Film Camera as well on the repair. But if you're interested in my photography, you can also check out my website, lostphilosophy.org, which I'll link below as well. And again, thank you so much for watching to the end, and I'll see you guys next time on any future related film content. Bye.